the kind of energy that is unimaginable. Yeah, but you know, IITs and IIMs still get funding from the government. Where we it's have more important for private universities. I, I agree with you that this, we, you know. we have to clear clear that space. And see, this is where I think uh, I must say I must criticize my own biradri, my own fraternity. We have not done a very good job of either articulating the core principles of the university uh, and educating the policymakers. So one of the things that I have tried to do behind the scenes is actually work very quietly with people so that you don't uh, engage in any trip wires and just educate the people and they understand. So the first point that I want to get, get across, the universities are not like the corporate sector. If you try and bring in corporate thinking, you're going to destroy the university. Secondly, governance is extremely important. Third, culture uh, has to be built. You know, you have to be very deliberate about how you build the culture of academic excellence, and uh, so on. So all those things we need to uh, proselytize. I think that's the only word that I can use. All right. Thank you so much, Shailendra. As I've heard this before once and was inspiring then and inspiring now as well. Two quick questions. Uh, taking upon the alumni thing. Yes. You know, the list of universities that you provide in the U.S., it seems the average age is 7,500 plus. Yeah. What happens to the ones which are 10 years old? Yeah. Um, those institutions whose alumni may not have, may not have attained that yes. degree of eminence or excellence or whatever, how do you deal with that in the interim? And the second question is, you, you kind of didn't mention the whole evolution of the Humboldtian model of research university yes. into its transformation in the United States the big gap between the time when Harvard was a college to the last 200 years of the evolution of modern university where American inspiration was the German imagination of universities, which of course also influenced the Japanese and others. Now, do you see a tectonic shift that has happened in the higher education sector with China leading this whole evolution in a very different manner which is largely state-led, it's all public universities, but enormous resources that is coming out of both state and also some private sector. Right. So, um, first, what should new universities do? So, uh, we have an example right in uh, our neighborhood with IIT Gandhinagar. So Sudhir Jain saw some of this work and he said, so what, he had not even graduated his first batch. So he came up with the brilliant idea, which I would commend to all of you, that his graduating batch, every student, I think there were only 80 of them uh, in the first year or something like that, every one of them took a pledge that forevermore, that they will contribute every year either 5,000 rupees or 1% of their income in perpetuity. Right? So first of all, it creates that sense of bonding and that sense of ownership. So that is step one. Step two is I say 10 years down the line, uh, 10 years after your first batch has graduated, create a junior league. Create advisory boards into which you bring in these alumni. So the, the way in which I am Ahmedabad, and I won't go into those details, but the way in which they did create the, the junior league was by creating a society. So there were 120 members of the society and they sent four members to the, uh, to the governing council. So create your own junior leagues and start preparing them uh, ASAP. And then 20 years after your founding, once you have CEOs of major corporations, uh, you know, dollar billionaires or what have you, then you bring them back in and say, look, now we are going to turn the university over to you. Uh, well, you know that old song, Ab tumhare hawale vatan saathiyon, ab tumhare hawale vishwavidyalaya saathiyon. You know, so that, that you have to, that you have to, uh, do. So that is number one. Number two, is the state in any way uh, uh, a barrier to realizing some of this vision? Is the Humboldtian vision, uh, I, by the way, I talk about this. Uh, in fact, uh, in the 22 layers of innovation, one was the Humboldtian integration of research into the university. Because remember, uh, people learned to do, the scientific method was followed outside of universities before it was brought in. And it was uh, Humboldt and uh, the University of Berlin which first brought in uh, all of this uh, into the university. 
And then Johns Hopkins was the first American university uh, to pioneer that model in the US. And then everybody else, including Stanford, including the German motto, Stanford has a motto in German, which was deeply embarrassing to them in the two world wars. But it, that was the tribute to the uh, vitality of uh, European universities and in particular German universities from whom they learned how to do research. So no, no problem, that can come in. Good governance means that you can uh, uh, glide over all of these uh, road, uh, road bumps. And in particular, China, uh, I think they have a very strong involvement of their alumni, partly because they come in. Uh, I mean, it helps if they've, uh, you know, if they're a very cohesive group. So I think they're able to build that consensus and build in something like this, even within the state sector. By the way, as I said, great public universities like Michigan, Purdue, where I taught for many years, as was mentioned, at Purdue, nine out of 10 uh, board members are alums, even though they're appointed by the governor. Uh, and uh, they come in through some other route. So there is no, in principle, uh, uh, dissonance. In fact, it may be easier if the state can basically say, look, these are the 10 most prominent alumni. We're going to put five of them on the board and you know, you take it forward. I think uh, the alumni of the IITs are the best and the brightest of India, the cream of India. If we cannot trust our institutions to them, then whom can we trust them to? So therefore, I think, uh, I, I don't see any problem with that. In fact, uh, one of the quick words, I would ask the question to Shaivendra, I'll have a chat. Uh, it's, uh, half the problem is who's on the board. The other half, the, half of the problem is how to do the governance. Uh, I don't think Harvard is perfect. Uh, from the recent scandals, you can see the governance is not exactly working. So one of the challenges we have in the Middle East is to how to govern. So Association of Governing Boards of Colleges and Universities in the US, which is about 100 years old, they do offer quite a bit of professional development for board members. So we'll go on to the next panel. Uh, I want to invite uh, the chair, Dr. Vidya, uh, pro-chancellor of Symbiosis International University. And actually, she's the right person to chair this because her, she and her uh, father created Symbiosis primarily to attract international students. And the topic is building global universities, promoting internationalization as institutional priority. And uh, Dr. Vidya's uh, panelists, can, can you please join? And she will introduce, introduce them. <laughs> 